Report this morning, multiple sources say diplomatic efforts between the United States and North Korea are on the verge of collapsing, in the words of one U.S. official on their last legs. Pyongyang has reportedly shunned talks with the U.S. after President Trump increased his public attacks on North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. According to officials, a top American diplomat, Joseph Yoon, has been warning Congress of the breakdown in meetings on Capitol Hill. A congressional aide who has spoken with Yoon directly tells NBC that the diplomat is searching for a Hail Mary attempt to restart any sort of dialogue. The breakdown in talks may explain recent comments from members of Congress on both sides, including Senator Bob Corker, who warned that Trump was undercutting diplomatic efforts. The growing tensions come as President Trump prepares for his first official trip to Asia next month. Trump's schedule is set to include visits to Japan, South Korea, and China, where North Korea is expected to be at the top of the agenda. Joining us from Washington, Democratic Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut. He's a member of the Foreign Relations Committee. Also with us at the table, Anya Menuel. She's the co-founder and partner in the strategic consulting firm Rice Hadley Gates, which, as the name suggests, features former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice, former National Security Advisor Stephen Hadley, and former Secretary of Defense Bob Gates. Good to have you both on board. Senator Murphy, I'll start with you about exactly how you would characterize uh, the nature of the situation with North Korea right now, and do you think President Trump's name-calling at uh, the leader of North Korea has pushed things to a dangerous level? Uh, it, it's not surprising that uh, our uh, negotiations are on life support right now. Uh, President Trump is deploying what is perhaps the worst negotiating strategy in the history of the American presidency. Uh, it's not just that he is out there calling uh, this guy names. Uh, it's that he is publicly undercutting his Department of State by uh, tweeting out that Rex Tillerson does not have his support and cannot talk uh, and negotiate on his behalf. So, so uh, Senator, what should we do? Because obviously, going back to 1994, we've had one failed uh, effort after another in North Korea. What, what is the right path forward? Obviously, we all agree it's not doing what Donald Trump's doing. Yeah, you don't poke what would you be doing person. right now? Well, again, you've got, to, you've got to empower your diplomats, and Trump is not wrong to make it very clear to the North Koreans that we have a military option, that we can take them out if they were ever to attack or threaten to attack us or our allies. But you've actually got to empower your diplomats to do the work, and you've got to communicate that the previous nuclear deals that other presidents have signed uh, are still good by threatening to back out of the Iran nuclear agreement. You're, you're not uh, um, incentivizing the North Koreans to enter into their own agreement. Um, so it's a combination of uh, military threats, um, real bilateral, multilateral economic sanctions, with, which this president cannot put together because he is out there insulting all of the allies who would work uh, with us on sanctions, and empowering your diplomats. He is doing none of the things necessary to achieve a real diplomatic breakthrough on North Korea. It's, it feels like, Anya, for many years, North Korean leaders have been viewed as uh, crazy and almost laughed at by a lot of people, you know, with all their outrageous personal personal claims and everything else. Are, where are you right now in terms of how seriously to take rhetoric out of North Korea? The things they've said for many years that they're now saying have a little more weight behind them than they used to be. So are you concerned about a nuclear confrontation or any confrontation with North Korea right now? Absolutely, and we really shouldn't be laughing at the rhetoric coming out. I think Kim Jong-un is more dangerous and more erratic than his father and grandfather. Also, you know, we're in the third U.S. presidential administration, fourth, uh, that's trying to resolve this problem. The nuclear threat from North Korea is only getting worse and worse. I do agree with Senator Murphy that we need to support our diplomats. It's going to, however, all credit to Joseph Yoon for keeping those channels open, but it's going to take more than a mid-level diplomat to do this. You need uh, South Korea, Japan, China, all on board, especially China. And I would say if there's one very narrow silver lining in all this, I was just in D.C. and heard that at least the conversations between the U.S. and the Chinese on North Korea are the most detailed and the most scenario planning we've ever done. 
Not to say that that will resolve it, but at least some form of diplomacy is still being given a chance now, in what, spite what, of the president's What do you say Kim Jong-un is even more erratic and even more dangerous? Could you uh, look at, for instance, what happened to Gaddafi? when he gave up his WMDs and then ended up being killed by the United States government and say, well, actually, if he wants to stay alive, this may be the most rational thing for him to do. Yeah, it's a good point. If sur regime survival is your goal, as right. clearly it is there, uh, having nuclear weapons is a decent way to do that as long as you don't employ them. Uh, I think you're right. Both what Senator Murphy said, backing out of the Iran deal doesn't uh, give us a whole lot of credibility. Uh, backing out, you know, Gaddafi gave up his nuclear weapons. We then invaded Libya. That doesn't give us a lot of credibility here. Uh, I do think diplomacy is the only way forward, and I'm glad that there are still efforts being made. So, Senator Murphy, diplomacy is the only way forward. Uh, empower the diplomats, as you just said. The Secretary of State was in Pakistan yesterday. An ally, not an ally. We're not really sure. North Korea on the precipice of we don't know what. If you were asked, if you were overseas in London or Bonn and some member of the cabinet in Great Britain or in Germany asked you to define American foreign policy in those areas, could you define it? <laughs> I, you know, American foreign policy is uh, completely incoherent today, and I actually was overseas this weekend. I was in Ukraine, uh, and I was in Estonia, which holds the EU presidency right now, and all they wanted to ask me about was whether the Trump administration had their back. Ukraine doesn't know whether Trump is with Russia or with them. The EU doesn't know whether Trump is trying to break them up or trying to strengthen them. And like I said, if you want any diplomatic path on North Korea, um, you have to put in place a series of multilateral sanctions with China that will ultimately bring them to the table. And this president is in just a historically weak position to rally the world to a crisis like this. Uh, so no, there is no way for me to explain what American foreign policy is abroad, but they are asking. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date.